workshop tonight is part six of the winter workshop. Uh, Christmas and New Year are fully over now, uh, so back back to work today. That was a bit of a grind, um, but yeah, hope you all had a nice Christmas and uh, happy New Year. And uh, now time to press on with getting this. So back first things together. first, so, the uh, spot lamp brackets are ready to go back on now. So those were taken off, uh, cleaned, degreased. Uh, cure rusted, then painted, and they've had a layer of lacquer over the top as well, just to give them a bit of extra protection. So they're probably not meant to be that shiny, um, but uh, I'm not too fussed as long as they don't go rusty. They'll last a little bit longer like that. So they're ready to go on. Spot lamps are sitting there. I did take the, t I marked them up actually before I took them off because I can't, I can't quite remember whether fogs are inside or outside. Spots on the outside maybe. Fogs in the middle. I've marked them up anyway, I'm pretty sure it's fogs in the middle, but uh, I've not got to worry about that because I did think about it first. Um, aside from that, the exhaust is still sitting there, I'd love to get that on, but uh, I haven't had the intermediate section from Mini Spares yet, so I can't remember when I ordered that, last Friday, Thursday, Friday, so um, should have been here by now, I might have to chase it up, see what's going on. Um, so yeah, let's just crack on and see where we get to. Okay, so that's the uh, front grille on now, spotlights on, uh, front bumper, front number plate. Uh, front bumper was a bit of a pain in the end, as you'd have seen at the end there. One of the captive bolts in the middle was broken, so I just had to quickly tack weld onto that. Uh, spotlights were a bit of a pain, just because the uh, wiring was all over the place. It's been mucked around with several times before, so I was just getting that neat tidy and back to kind of uh, factory how it was originally. Um, so some good news today. Uh, this is my heat shield for the exhaust, which as you can see is in a right mess. Um, and if you're running a catalytic converter, you really need to be using this heat shield because as you can see that the heat's damaged it around here. Um, and like I explained in one of the earlier videos, if it's damaged like this and with holes in it, that heat gets transferred to the inside of the car, will melt the carpets, the underlay, uh, and the body sealer on the underside of the car as it did with mine. So I've been trying to get that for a couple of months actually, but it's one of those sort of things on a Mini that that, that just gets thrown away um, because of what it's made for as well. If you take it off and leave it outside, it just absorbs moisture and uh, it, it turns into uh, just mush. It's no good. So I finally managed to find one of them on eBay for a reasonable price, so that should be here soon. Um, the exhaust intermediate part turned up today from mini spares uh, so that never let me down as you can see it's slightly different the the older ones obviously been cut down at some stage for the jan speed rear box 
Uh, so this one I just need to measure it up and cut it a little bit short there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're really into the sort of final throws now. Uh, one really disappointing, well, not disappointing actually, but a result of uh, just the work I've been doing on the car. One of the first things I've done was take the bonnet off. Uh, the bonnet went into the little study room uh, beside my garage here and just sat on the sofa basically. Obviously, as you know, I sprayed under the bonnet um, and <clears throat> even, to, even though the car was completely covered, even though the door up there was shut or left shut all the time, uh, some of that overspray must have just leaked through the gaps in the door, ended up in the study room and covered everything with just a fine layer of, I guess it's just a uh, lacquer overspray. Um, so you can probably hear it, but if I run my hand over the bonnet, I don't want to do it too much because it will scratch it, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's rough as anything. It feels horrible. You can't actually see anything in the paint, but there's, I think there's just a layer of sort of uh, lacquer on there. Uh, compared to the top wing which was covered by paper uh, that's pretty much okay so there's there's um, a couple of ways of addressing this the way I'm going to do it is with um, something called a clay bar um, so uh, I'll show you that briefly but that removes contaminant from the paint it's not non abrasive uh, and it just does it in a really friendly way. It doesn't wear down the paint. It doesn't damage the paint at all. And it lifts the dirt out of the paint really, really well. Uh, I guess if we go a bit old school in the past, you'd use something like tea cut. Um, I've still got some tea cut. It's quite useful for cleaning up metal bits and that. But don't like using it on paintwork at all. Um, it, it, it's abrasive, so it will it will wear down the paintwork and rub through the paintwork eventually. It's a, it's a bit old school tea car. I mean, it still has its uses for certain things, but I wouldn't be using it on the paint of this car. Uh, so we've got the clay bar in here. Um, it does just like a lump. Of, it's just like a lump of clay. Um, there's a new one there. I keep it in a box, or it's kept in a box because you don't want to get dirt and grit and contaminant in it because you're going to be using it on the car. There's an old one, one I used earlier. Um, use that on other cars and uh, I think I'll just I'll give up without I'll throw that one away because it's quite dirty I don't know what's in that so this is a brand new clay bar and we'll have a sort of before and after photo of it of what it looks like after I run it over that bonnet so uh, it's pretty easy to do actually you, you spray a lubricant onto the paintwork you can buy um, a, a special lubricant for it or if you've not got anything you can just use a bit of car shampoo water down you just want something so that will rub nicely and nicely gently and smoothly over the paintwork i'm going to use some demon shine uh, sort of spray on detailer shine that that tends to work pretty well and you just buff it off with a microfiber cloth afterwards once you've done that you'd, you'd apply some wax or some polish just to seal it and protect it afterwards Okay guys, so that's uh, literally just half the bonnet done. I've done one half, not done the other. Uh, when you look at it actually, it doesn't look that much different, but I can tell you the feel of the bonnet is just amazingly different. I can't believe I washed this car the other day, so that is the state of the clay bar after doing one side of the bonnet. So that's how much contaminant was on that bonnet. Um, but the real proof is in the, is in the feel of the paintwork. Obviously you won't be able to feel it, but you'll you'll hear the difference. That's smooth as glass now. It's amazing how much difference it makes, it really is.
Okay guys, so that's the bonnet all done now. Uh, put a little bit too much polish on at the end there. But uh, yeah, it looks much, much better now. It's lovely and smooth. It doesn't make a horrible noise when I run my hands over it. I'm going to get on and do the rest of the car now. But that is it's just, as you can see, smooth as anything now. So thanks for watching and look forward to catching you next time.